Rebel Tigrayan forces say that they have completed their withdrawal from the Amhara and Afar regions. This is according to the spokesperson for the Tigray's People's Liberation Front, the party that controls the Tigray's region in northern Ethiopia. The withdrawal, which is a step towards a possible ceasefire in the 13-month-old war between the Tigrayan forces and the Ethiopian government, comes after major territorial gains by the Ethiopian military. The Ethiopian government said today that almost all areas of Amhara region are free of rebels. All right, let's now take a look at the state of the war in Ethiopia. And in 2019, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed emerged uh, several political parties. However, the Tigray People's Liberation Front refused to join the New Prosperity Party. In September 2020, Tigray conducted regional elections. This move defied the federal government that had postponed a national vote to 2021, citing COVID-19 disruptions. What followed were attacks on army bases in Tigray, which sparked retaliation from the national government that soon captured the capital, Mekele, in late November. However, in June this year, Tigrayan rebels took back Mekele and advanced into neighboring Amhara and Afar regions. They began partnering with other opposition forces and took several towns south of Tigray, a move that marked the beginning of their threat to take over the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa. Well, peace efforts began first through the African Union that sent a delegation of three former African presidents to Addis Ababa. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed stated that the government intended to continue carrying out its military operations in the north of the country. Another intercession came via a meeting of the Intergovernmental Authority on Development in Djibouti this month that addressed the Ethiopian crisis, among other issues. Other African nations have called for an Ethiopian-owned process in the spirit of finding African solutions to African problems. The AU envoy, former president of Nigeria, Lusigon Abasanjo, also met the conflicting parties separately, stating that they all agreed that a political solution was required. Meanwhile, Western countries such as France, Germany, the U.S., U.K., and Sweden have advised their citizens to leave Ethiopia amid the unrest. Well, according to the U.N., the fighting in Ethiopia has left a trail of destruction, including a humanitarian crisis in the north that has affected millions of people. On Friday, the U.N. voted to set up a team to conduct fresh investigations into human rights abuses in the, in the country. Ethiopia protested, saying it was an attempt by some nations to interfere in its internal affairs. In the latest developments from the battlefront, the spokesman of the Tigrayan forces says they are beginning a strategic withdrawal from the neighboring regions in a bid to end the nation's ongoing war. This comes after the government announced that it had recaptured towns in the Afar and Amhara regions seized by TPLF fighters. All right, for a look at what today's events mean for Ethiopia, we have with us William Davison, a senior analyst on Ethiopia at International Crisis Group. He joins us live uh, via Zoom from Cambridge, UK. Well, welcome to the program, Mr. Davison. We appreciate your company here on Africa Live. How do you see this turn of events impacting the trajectory of the conflict in Ethiopia's north? The conflict's been, um, yeah, to some extent, quite un un unpredictable with you know, major twists and, and turns in it. So it's, it's hard to say. But I think you know, what we do have is, um, you know, for, certainly for the foreseeable future, there will be no effort by the Tigray uh, leadership to try and you know, impose a transitional government as they were planning to do or control the Djibouti Road, uh, the main trade corridor. That looks off the agenda for now instead because of these battlefield reversals, uh, because of the sort of popular mobilization. Um, because of the drone strikes, which, you know, hit their stretched supply lines. They've retreated all the way to Tigray and they've made this sort of uh, peace offer. And that, that peace offer does include some significant elements in it, such as sort of taking off the table the issue of um, the return of, of Western Tigray, which was taken over by Amhara region at the beginning of the war, um, not listing that as a precondition. So it does at least seem like a, a you know, genuine effort to get a peace process going by the Tigray leadership, but after they've suffered, suffered these battlefield reversals and, and have been forced to withdraw all the way. All right, William, let me ask you this. Where does this leave the Tigray regional state itself? What kind of future will it have if things remain as they are as of tonight? Well, there's no, there's no way things are going to remain um, as, as they are. I mean, you know, it's still Tigray is essentially under a blockade. There's just one humanitarian corridor going in, heavily restricted 
by the federal government. There's no federally provided services to Tigray, uh, electricity, banking, telecommunications. There's no trade going in. So it's a region which is in you know, serious problems. Um, so obviously, if that continues, um, it will be a, it continues to be a devastating situation for the people there. And I think you know, the fate of the region really depends um, you know, upon uh, this offer that the Tigray leadership has, has made for a cessation of hostilities. How is Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed going to respond to that? How is Ab um, the Amhara government going to respond to that? Also, you know, how is President Isaias in, in Eritrea? Are people going to accept making a deal with the TPLF leadership, which might involve rehabilitating a political party which has been classified as a terrorist organization? It's the potential for a peace process and initially the response of the federal government and its allies, which will determine the fate of the region at this point. All right, that leads me to my last question. One more question, if you would indulge me. How does this impact the recently formed UN panel to probe the war in the north? I, I, don't, I don't think it does particularly. I mean, I think the, the issue with the, um, you know, the, the, the UN um, Commission of Experts process is that Addis Ababa is resistant to it. So as far as we can tell, there's going to be no access um, for that panel on the ground in, in Ethiopia um, until the federal government shifts its position. That stance will, will remain. I think that process is really something that will go on in the background with or without the cooperation of the federal government. It's about long term accountability and justice. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be you know, significantly impacted by, by these recent developments. All right, William Davis and Leslie, let's leave it there. Thank you for that update and report. Much appreciated.